Hi, in this video, we'll look at one of your homework questions. So this question from your homework deals with electric forces. And th this is an excellent opportunity to review some of the problem solving techniques that you should have learned in physics 4A, but maybe it's been a while ago, or maybe you never learned it properly. So let me use this opportunity to review the techniques for solving force problems. So let's review what information is given. Two small balls, each of some mass, are attached to some threads of some length, which are then tied to the same point, and we are given the angle that the thread makes with the vertical, and the balls are given some charge Q, and they hang like this. And the question asks for what is the magnitude of the charge? All right, so this is a force problem. Depending on how experienced you are at solving them, you can mentally check off as you review this information that this problem is completely determined, that you are given enough information in the problem to be able to figure out the magnitude of the charge. Now, if you don't have as much practice, then let's go through the steps that we go through in Physics 4A. This is what we call standard strategy. It's a four-step strategy. Let me outline it for those of you who might have forgotten it. So I'm going to be brief in my description of each of the four steps because I want to keep this video short. But please understand it is meant to be a short end for all the considerations and things that go into it. So the first step is you draw a free body diagram. The second step is you define coordinate axis. The third step is you break down forces that you have from drawing free body diagram into components. And the fourth and final step is you write down Newton's second law equation. Now, what you should realize at this point is that you are not actually done solving the question because this standard strategy isn't meant to be something that spits out the answer. It's meant to take you to a place where you have a system of equations, so now you can apply math for the remainder of the question and solve for whatever quantity is asked for. So that's what we are going to apply to this problem also. So let me start out with step one, drawing free body diagram. I am going to pick one of the two charges to draw the force diagram of. Let me pick the charge on the right. So I try to keep my free body diagrams as simple as possible. So most objects get represented with a dot. And my job for the next couple minutes is to draw all the forces on this dot. I have a couple rules to keep me on task here. The most important rule is that I only draw the forces as needed. It keeps me from identifying forces that don't exist. So here, the force to start out with is gravity, the weight. It's sort of ever present when you're on Earth. Once you draw the weight, then questions start popping up. Why isn't this ball accelerating downward? Well, it's because it's tied to a string. So there must be tension force then. Uh, tension force goes in the same direction as the string, so let me draw that. I'm going to exaggerate the angle a little bit. And once I draw the tension and weight force, then there's still questions remaining. Why isn't the ball accelerating to the left? And this is where electrostatics actually now comes in. It's because there's a Coulomb repulsion force between the two balls, which is pointing to the right for the ball on the right. So now my free body diagram looks complete. All the forces are identified there. And the diagram I've drawn is consistent with the fact that the ball is not accelerating. All right, now step number two, I need to define the axis. We usually define the axis so that one of the two axes parallel to the acceleration. Here, since we have zero acceleration, it sort of makes sense to pick the axis that kind of lines up with the forces, so that most forces are either along the x direction or the y direction. This makes our job in step number three easier. We need to break down forces into components. So here, Gravity and the electric force are already along one of the axes, so no components to deal with. But the tension force 
is in some oblique direction. So we have to divide it up into the y component and the x component. And this is also the step where it's useful to label all the angles and work it out, work out some expression for the components also. So the angle given in the problem is this angle theta here. And staring at the geometry, that should be the same angle as this theta, which gives us the expressions for the x component of tension and the y component of tension. All right, now we are ready for step number four, writing down Newton's second law equations. So the thing to remember here is we need to write down Newton's second law equations for each axis and each object. So we need to write it down for the x component and for the y component. So it looks like we have two forces in each of the components. So let me write it down. The electric force minus the x component of tension, Tx or T sine theta, is equal to zero, mass times acceleration. And the y component of forces, the y component of tension, T cosine theta, minus mg, is equal to also zero, mass times acceleration. So here we have all the information we need to solve for the electric force. So let's do that. Um, we won't quite be done because the question is that asking for the electric force. But I think that's a good intermediate step where that's the question you could have been asked even in physics 4A. So I'm going to solve equation 2 for tension. And when you plug it into equation 1 to eliminate tension, you get the electric force is mg tangent theta. And we have numerical values for every quantity here. So we can calculate what electric force is. Unfortunately, that's not the question. The question is, what is the magnitude of Q? So this is where we now have to use our knowledge of electrostatics to relate to the charge. So you remember Coulomb's law? This electrostatic force should be Coulomb's constant times the product of charges, or in this case, Q squared divided by the distance squared. Uh -huh. Looks like we don't quite have distance information given directly to us. We need to figure it out from geometry, which is, I guess, what this length is here for. So we can figure out the length of this leg here. We have a right triangle. So this leg is L sine theta. So the overall distance between the two charges should be 2L sine theta. All right, plug in all that information in. This is the equation we get. mg tangent theta is equal to Coulomb's constant times Q squared divided by 4L squared sine squared theta. Okay, let's solve it for Q. All right, so this is Q. We can probably simplify it more, but since we have all the numerical values and we're not planning on doing anything with it, it seems like there's no real payoff here. Um, but this is the review of the strategy for approaching force problems. And although the focus of this class isn't on force problems, physics is cumulative, and the techniques you learned in Physics 4A you should remember it, and you should know how to apply it for this class. So, until next time then, bye.